Well, my name is Alan McCullough and around this harbour I've got lots and lots of titles but officially I'm Chief Executive of uh, Anglo-North Irish PO and Seasource. Fishing's in the blood. Uh, my, my dad was a fisherman. I never went to sea and fish commercially myself, but um, certainly when I was growing up, I looked forward to the summer holidays and spending a few weeks out on the boat that my dad fished on. Uh, my wife's father was a fisherman as too. Her brothers are fishermen. Uh, my grandfather on my mother's side, he was in the Merchant Navy, so there's salt in the blood. So the destiny was here. When I started here at the harbour just over 30 years ago, I was based in a small, in a small port cabin. Um, and there was me and one other gentleman who was full-time and uh, a part-time secretary. And we've now grown into a business that employs over, over 70 people. Uh, we have various sites around the harbour here, from our, our offices to our factories. And the business has grown from one with a, a turnover of a couple of hundred thousand pounds a year to one that's pushing this year 30 million pounds. Uh, so like it is a success story, but I'll say it again, success stories down to a team effort and the team starts with these guys behind me in the fishing boats. Hello, my name is Stephen Price and I work here at Sea Source Processing Limited in Kilkeel. I'm going to give you a wee run around here our shellfish processing factory today and give you a little bit of information on what we do here. So if you come along with me here, we have some product here that was landed last night. As you can see, look, this little guy here, he's still moving. That's how fresh he is. These guys here are only fished maybe two or three hours off the coast. The boats land every night, if not every second night, which gives us the main fresh product that we see here today. As you can see, these guys here, as I say, still kicking, I said, so can't get no fresher than that. So if we move on here, the product then, when it's landed from the boat and brought into the factory here, is put into the wash. When you go through the wash here, that'll get all the grit and the dirt that the boats haven't got out whenever they've washed them on board. So this just gives it an extra cleanse. If you move on up the line then, the product comes through the wash, comes down into our dip tank here. Whenever it goes into the dip tank, this here is mixed in a solution to help the freshness of the product and help the freshness of the prawns. It needs to be in this solution for around five to seven minutes. So this is a time belt. So the product gets the correct solution before it goes on to further processing. If you follow us on up here now into the, the start of the grading machine, you come up here, the girls here today are putting the prawns into each one of these wee cups. As you can see here, if we have any damages, which is a guy here has lost his claws and he's smashed at the back, they'll be through over the back and come down into the discard chute. This discard here doesn't go to waste as we will tail that product, which we get meat out of, and then also the heads and claws will be packed as well, as you can see down here. And this then will go for soups and beasts and stuff like that there. So nothing of the product is wasted. It all has a marketable value. Once we come through here, this gives us our grading machine. So this grades every prawn individually. As you can see here, we're doing about 150 pieces per minute. And then this number here is each prawn being weighed individually. They go down onto the grader and packed into five different sizes. As you can see here, the staff members are packing into three kilo cartons. They lay them out nice and straight, with the claws out straight as well, which gives a nice presentation for the customers. Any other damages that are missed here can then be tailed. If you carry along, you'll see different sizes, different grades, and uh, each one of them is placed on a rack, each for boat and for size, which gives us the traceability for boat to plate. When we move on down then, once the racks are all full, then they proceed down into the blast freezer. The blast freezer is running on about minus 45 and it runs like that for maybe three to four hours. This locks the freshness and keeps the product in good condition. Once we get the discards and the shells back, we bring it down here and then we have a team which shells the, the discards, which gives us our saleable meat then. As you can see here, now we have the hotel scampi and this will be breaded or battered 
and will be on your plate for your pub grub and your fish and chips. After our product then is froze down for the four hours, it's brought out and put through a glazing machine here. This machine puts a coat of water over the product, which then keeps it from being freezer burnt and keeps the quality of the product as it is shipped. We ship at the minute to four or five different countries in Europe, and also that they are uh, available in local shops and wholesalers throughout Northern Ireland. There's, it's a multifaceted business. It's the, the, the PO, as it's called within the industry, basically manages the fishing opportunities on behalf of the fishermen. It does the, 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 the political, with a small p, the political representation. It does a lot of the administrative support for the fishermen as well, maybe around, for example, uh, crews. Uh, we then diversified into fish sales, fish auctioneering, which doesn't sound very example, but it was revolutionary for a community like this, that again, the fishermen were taking control to some extent of their own destiny. Uh, we were able to cut costs. Again, it's about getting the money back into the fishermen. We then diversified again into providing various services to offshore energy companies. So it might be offshore wind, it might be multinational companies that are laying undersea cables across the seabeds, using the expertise and the assets that we have here, offering them various, various uh, services. And then in 2014, the next step on the ladder, the next part of the strategy was to add value to the seafood chain. And that's why uh, we bought the number one factory, why we moved into the second factory, and while we're in the process of now expanding the business again. Uh, we catch all sorts of species, from the very largest boats here that are too big to fit into this harbour, uh, that really roam right around these islands, catching mackerel, catching herring. Uh, that's mainly landed um, in other parts of, of, of Europe, any place from Donegal to Norway. The ultimate goal is to bring more of that home, and that's why we would like to see the development of a new outer harbour here in Kilkeel, um, and that is progressing. But for this fleet, uh, the local fleet, the most important species are langoustine, uh, scallops, brown crab, and then the whitefish species like haddock especially. And really we're processing and adding value to all of those, exporting them across Europe and sometimes beyond. And uh, that takes me on international travels, and I'm just back last night from Italy, where we were talking to the people there who, who buy langoustine from, from the fishermen here in Northern Ireland. Aim and vision, uh, we put it very simply. I have two young children at home. Though my kids will ultimately make a decision as to what they're gonna do with their career. But what we're about is making sure as far as we can that they have an option to stay in this community, to stay at home and contribute to this, to this uh, community and to the economy here in County Down. I'm Gordon Weir and I've been here a few years and filleting most of the time. That's what I've been doing. I've been in the fishing industry from about 50 years. <laughs> so, uh, just at the fishing first and then come into this end and selling the fishing, just nearly all our parts of the fishing industry, you know. But just finished up with this here now since this last few years. At the minute, we're just doing a lot of haddock, which is the fish that we're using just at the minute. Is uh, those, the haddock there, has the fingerprint and the thumbprint on it. Every fish, uh, not a big difference in some of them, but some of them is very different. Like you have flat fish, and then you have what you call the round fish, which we're doing now. And But there's different, bone structure in most fish. So it's just knowing where the, the bone structure is. And that's how we sort of tell the difference when you're working with a knife. The fish comes in here, they're gutted, just like that there, and we're taking the flesh off the bone. And that's some of that, just down through the fish. Do some slow here, and I'll show you the fillet then when we get it. And then it goes over to the other side there to get skinned. There's the fillet. 
you know, and there's two, both sides of the fish. One side, turn over and do the other side. The rest of the fish here is, as goes in, goes for bait. That goes for the other boys to take out for the bait for the catch crab and lobster. That's used, there's nothing wasted. It all goes for something, even the skin comes off there sometimes. It goes for making a dog food, for dog treats, it's dried out. The sooner you can get the gut out of the fish, the best shelf life you have. And as soon as you get it off the bone, the best shelf life you'll have. Every day is a learning day, <laughs> no matter what you're at. So, no, it's just, you watch some of these younger fellas that you, you, you pick up things. <laughs> some of them not all that good, like. <laughs> We're based in this corner of Northern Ireland, Kilkeel, uh, the, ki the Kingdom of Mourne. A lot of people think that once they get to Newcastle, the world comes to an end and they fall off a cliff somehow. Uh, but there's a world beyond Newcastle, indeed a world beyond Worm Point coming the other way. Um, people find it hard to travel this far. They expect all of us to travel to Belfast, uh, but nobody wants to come down to Kilkeel. So we're left with the option about attracting good people. And we do have talented people around Kilkeel and the Kingdom of Mourne. So really, it makes me very happy that we built this company um, up, that people are looking for careers here. Careers in the offices, uh, be it administration, uh, be it on, on, the, on the offshore uh, guard vessels and supply vessels that we employ. And there's, there's so many different opportunities around that. So it really makes me somewhat proud that, that we've well-qualified local people who are looking to stay at home this area has lots of things to offer, and one of them is the seafood industry. This is our community, and uh, for many, many years, fishermen were price takers. And we really wanted something to get more money back into these guys' pockets. Because this is a tough, it's a tough job, but it's a very, very rewarding job. Uh, there's career pathways to be here, uh, but those careers have to be rewarded. So Sea Source is about pushing as much money as we can back into the fishermen's pockets. Not to me, I'm well paid, I'm looked after, but these are the important guys. If we don't have fishermen, I don't have a job. So that's why Sea Source was founded, to push as much reward back to the fishermen as we can afford. The boats catch the crabs in lobster pots or crab pots and then they're transferred from pot to boat and then as you can see these are still fresh so these are literally just landed last night so then these are coming in here and to be processed into the into the boiler and then straight in to be sorted out for meat and uh, shipped out in a couple of days. This is your female crab as you can see you can tell the difference I'll get you a male one. So, as you can see, the males tend to be a bit bigger, broader across the head. You can also tell by here, where your female has a pouch. And then there is where they keep their eggs. Basically, when the crabs come in, they come in in the boxes. And what I'm doing is I'm sorting them out between male and female. So I can see that's a male crab, so I just put that into the mailbox. <coughs> Usually check to make sure that all the legs and toes are on, so that there is one whole crab. If there's any damage, they have a toe missing. They can't be processed because the customer only wants whole crab. That'll go in to be used for toes. As you can see that the crab, these crab are still alive, and there is a chance that you will get nipped. But if you hold them in a certain way like that there, they can't actually get their claws back, and that keeps your fingers safe. If you follow me, I'll take these meal crabs and I'll show you how they're processed. So, as you can see from the processing of sorting out the crab, now we're into the boiler room. So, this is your boiler. 
Uh, we roughly hold about three or 450 litres of water. We put about six uh, kilos of salt into the water and then we let it boil up to 96 degrees. So this has all been pre-boiled before you come, so it's ready now to put the crab in and get them in the boiler. So the process has went from the boiler into the tubs behind you, which is the cooling. So they will cool in there any between 20 to 25 minutes to bring the temperature down to four degrees. So once uh, we get the temperature down to four degrees, we make sure that the crab themselves, as you can see now are dead. And we need to make sure for the customer, they are looking for the whole crab. So that's both claws and all limbs are intact. Once that's been checked and then it's verified that everything's okay, we take it then to the vacuum packing machine. That's just your bag. Just put the crab in. Make sure the legs are all tucked in there. You don't want to puncture the bag. Just pull it, pull it down. What she'll do is she decompresses the whole system and then she will suck the, the bag in around the crab to keep it nice and tight. They're all vacuum packed individually so we can put them into 10 kilo boxes and then shipped off to the customers. As you can see, we have crab toes here. These have been cooked. So inside the, the crab the toe itself, you have three compartments. You have the main claw itself, and then you have two joints. In there is what we call crab white meat. I'll come this way, I'll show you what we do. What we do is, to get the meat out of here, we just use a wee picker inside, pull the meat out, and then that shell is then far away. Then we get these, we snippers. We just take the wee joint off here. As you can see, you'll not be able to get that off unless you get the joint off. Just snip in there, pull that out. Again, picker. Your meat goes in there. Then onto the shell. So this here is called the, cr the cracker. All you need to do is apply a wee bit of pressure. Take the shell off. And then that's classed as a crab claw. Hiya, I'm Michelle here at Seasore Seafood Shop in Kilkeel here. We're just going to get another wee delivery that's come up here, fresh cut haddock this morning. So we are inside the shop here in Kilkeel. We have been here a year past in September. We were previously across the road for five years. We moved over here actually because we got a lot more busier. We have more room for prepping for the morning once the fish comes up, which is delivered at half seven, straight from the harbour, from the fishermen, processed and delivered. Then if we're busy in our day, we always get our second delivery up 
which you have just seen coming in and seen it process at the harbour. We are open from half eight to five o'clock, Monday to Friday and Saturday morning from half eight to half four. The fish is that fresh here in Sea Source that even the fishermen come in to buy their fish to take out to sea for them for their tea. So we'll go and have a wee look at what we have in today. So this is our fresh haddock. You just see me bringing in from the van where it was filled it this morning down at the harbour. It's actually our second box up as it's our best seller and we'd sold out this morning. So this is our natural smoked haddock. We have a dyed cod. We also have in today our monk fish here, which is very, very versatile. It's great for monk curries. You can make your own scampi. You can bake it in the oven. We also have in here our potted herring. This is our herring season. They're caught locally. They're actually made by a local man that used to be a fisherman, and they are just in this morning also. In here we have our hake, which as you can see, we have wee recipe books here to give you great ideas on how to cook, simple, easy. We also have our local scallops, which are cut local just down at the factory, just in this morning also. This is our local cod, brilliant for battered, frying, baking, versatile also. So as well as our fresh range of fish, we also have our battered haddock. We also do a range of gluten-free haddock cujons. And towards the weekend, we do a fantastic range of whole fish, such as lemon sole, dover, brill. We also do fillets of lemon sole and place fillets. So if you're interested, why not call in and try some of the freshest local produce around? Hi folks, my name's Donna and I'm a member of the culinary team in Sea Source in Kilkeel. You've seen Gordy fillet the fish and skin the fish. This is the end product that Gordy has given us. Absolutely beautiful, I'm sure you'll agree. So now we're going to go on to the process of battering the fish. So first of all we need ice cold water. So I have my ice cold water in my bowl and we're going to make some batter. So we're just going to put a few of our ingredients into this bowl and then we're gonna give them a good mix around. So I have a special ingredient and I have my flour and we're gonna mix it all around until we have a nice consistency. Now it takes quite a lot of flour to mix this. We'll give it a little whisk around and we'll see how we're going. In my roll, I cook for the shop in cookie. So we have fresh fish coming to us every morning. Every morning it's prepped in the factory and it's brought up to me in the kitchen. So we couldn't get no fresh of our product. We make uh, haddock goujons. At the moment, we're in the process of developing a product range. So as you can see, it's taking quite a lot of flour and whisking. So we give it a good whisk to get the air into it. As you can see, it's starting to thicken up nicely. Now we don't want it too thick. We just want a nice consistency. So my little way of testing the batter to see if it's the right consistency is pop our finger in and pull our finger out. And if the batter's sticking nicely to our finger, obviously it's going to stick lovely to the fish. So as we can see there, it, it's sticking well, it's looking good. We're ready to start battering. So I have my own special recipe that we use for coating the fish. Now, many people will use flour or they will use egg white. It's just something to make the, the batter mix stick to it. So we coat that in here and pop them in here. Now, Make sure our fish is fully coated with batter, especially around the edges. So we have our pan sitting at 180 degrees. And we just gently pop them in. You hear that lovely sizzle. And they'll take approximately six to seven minutes to cook through.
Now folks, as you can see, after seven to eight minutes, we have lovely crispy haddock goujons. It's easy as that. Now, all we need to do is add some chips and peas and tartar sauce and our dinner's ready. There you have it guys, that's our finished product straight from the harbour in Kilkeel to our plates and it's available in our shops as well to make it even easier for you at home.